Hallelujah. Amen. We want to welcome all, all of us to another edition of the Sunday School Review for all our teachers and our CCG. And we pray that as we go through this that God will go with us in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for how far you have helped us. I say, Father, our thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Lord, we are here to learn from you. We pray, God, that you shall give us wisdom and study in the name of Jesus. Shall inspire us up on eye in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today, lesson 31, intentional parenting. The topic is what? Intentional parenting. Intentional parenting. Opening prayer. Almighty Father, please help all parents to train up their children in the way of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Let us pray together, teach us that the Almighty Father will help all our parents all over the world to train the, uh, all ch their children in the way of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that help all our, ch all our parents to train up their children in the way of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Once again, the topic is intentional parenting. And the Bible passage is taken from Esther chapter 2, verse 5 to 9. Esther chapter 2, verse 5 to 9. Now in Shushan, the palace where there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jah, the son of Shema, the son of Kish, a Benjamin. Verse 6. Who had been carried away from Jerusalem with, with cap captivity, which had been carried away with jo Joshua, the king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Adazah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. Verse 8. So it came to pass. When the king's command, commandment and his decree was heard, and when many medias were gathered together unto Shusan the palace, with the custody of Agai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house, with the custody, custody of Agai, keeper of the women. Verse 9 is the last verse. And the median pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her sins for purification, which such things as belonged to her and several medians which were meet to give her out of the king's house and he preferred her and her maid unto the best place of the house of the women praise the lord this is the story of esther and mordecai esther is the adopted daughter of what mordecai mordecai is her uncle because if you can see her that he brought her up he directed her in the way she should go. If you, by extension, can read verse 10 to 13 of this particular passage, you see that when Mordecai brought Esther to the palace, he didn't leave her alone. He was there trying to make sure that she, she know, to, 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 to know what was happening to her in the palace. That's how, as parents, we must be there to put our children in the right way we should they should go and remember still from book of proverbs 22 verse 6 memory verse proverbs 22 verse 6 you say train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it i'll say it again proverbs 22 6 says that train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it another version says the new living version says that Directs your children on the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. I want us to know that this topic was intentional parenting. Mordecai was intentional about what? About Esther. He knew what was good for her. He put her in the right way of the Lord, it, despite that she was his was adopted daughter. So God is telling you and I as parents that we should direct our children on the right path. Train, we should treat them in the way they should go. That when they are, they are old, they will not depart from it. God, good parenting does not just happen. Anybody just wish that, ah, my, my children will be good, they will turn out right. It does not just happen just that way. The actions we intentionally take, or this to take, and the ways we consciously parent, in the midst of all 
life and in this have direct impact on our children. Good parenting is not a it's not a wishful thinking. It's what we must consciously want to do. You can wish that you, you can wish that you, your, your, your children turn out right, but if you don't do anything about it, it should be a wishful thinking. So I want my children, children, children to turn out right without doing what I'm supposed to do. It's a wishful thinking, and wishes don't come to pass if you don't take what action. If you don't take what action, so God is telling you and I today that wish was take conscious effort, make conscious effort to bring forth what children what that will give glory to the name of the Lord. We have two lesson outlines today. The first one says intentional parenting described. Intentional parenting described. What is intentional parenting? What does it entail? It entails parenting with a goal. It entails what? Parenting with a goal. In parenting, if you don't have a goal, every way will become what? A way. Everything happens will, be, will become what you want to give your child. But when you parent with a goal, you know why what you are doing. You know why you are telling your, your child to do what he or she is doing. Then you have a goal. The Bible says in Abba 2, uh, verse 2, which says that, and not as having and said, write the vision, make it plain, open tables, that he may run directed it. Daddy, mommy, what is your goal? Why, what is your goal for training that child the way you are training that child? What do you have in mind? What is your goal? Why are you, why are you pushing that child from, 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 from primary three to GS1? What is the goal? What is your goal of parenting? So what is it? So my friends, it is what I need to think through every step of a child's stage of development. Is the ability for you and I, as friends, to sit down, to think through every stage of a child's develop development. Don't just grow with a child. Be intentional. Be intentional about it. According to 1 Samuel 1 verse 11, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will need look unto the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but we give unto her a man child, and I'll give unto the Lord all the days of his life. Anna was intentional. She took, she, 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 she taught to the child's stage of development. She didn't leave it that, and eh, what will be, will be, what will be, will be. No, she was conscious. Parents, let us be conscious of what we are doing. We cannot afford to parent just, just to have children and don't and not be conscious about every stage of their life. Your child may be in primary school, secondary school, university. Are you conscious about the stage they have? Because they will leave that stage. What are you and I doing? Number three is it, parenting, in terms of parenting, is making informed and conscious parenting choices. Making informed and conscious parenting choices. Because many parents say we, do, we don't make conscious choices. We don't make choices because, because we want to make them. Are you informed about what is happening to your child now? Do you know your child? This thing that I'm asking that child to take, are you informed about it? Look at this, let's look at Genesis chapter 23, 3 and 4. He says, And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the head, that thou shalt not, make, not take a wife unto my sons of daughters of Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country, and my children that take a wife unto my son Isaac. This was, I, this was Father Abraham telling, uh, uh, telling his servant that this this my son Isaac. I don't want him to marry from the pagan. I want him to marry from my country. He, 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 he made informed choices. He said, I don't want this child to marry from pagan. I want him to marry from what? From, from, my, own, from my own country. He made what? Informed choices. Please, parents, any choices what we are making on behalf of our children, let me be choice what? That is informed, that is conscious concerning our children. It's, it also involves you to help your children to succeed. When, you, when we are parenting intentionally, we are helping these children to succeed. I want to say that it is not only your biological children that are your children. No, every child you meet is, your, is, a, is a child to you. 
Don't parent only your own children. If you see a child doing doing wrong, please take time to 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 talk to that child because you don't you may, you may never know you are saving that child. So it also involves us us helping our children to succeed. According to Second Timothy one verse, you say that when I call to remember the, your faith, faith and it's, that is in thee, we dwell first in, their, in your grand, grandmother and mother you need. I am persuaded that is also in thee. That is Paul talking to Timothy. Because Timothy's mother and grandmother make sure he succeeded. What are you doing to make your children succeed? What am I doing? What are we doing together to make our children succeed? That's what we call intentional parenting. And intentional parenting also involves action that parents take to support their children's strengths and weaknesses. What are the actions you are taking? Don't just be a donor or spam. Don't just be a carrier of a child in your womb. Be a parent that that is taking what, a actions to support your child's strengths and strengths and their weaknesses. Let us take those actions. It also involves parents' activities uh, and to facilitate the development of their children. What are you doing to facilitate the development of your children to achieve their desired result? You don't just parent those who have those children that have done great. Their parent took conscious effort to have what desirable result, uh, results. So, as a parent, what should you, what should be your goal? What should be my goal when I'm parenting intentionally? What should be your goal? What should you look for when you are parenting intentionally? And my one is, is what is to help your children walk in the full step of godly, godly parents. It means that if I'm parenting intentionally, my I must my goal is to make my children walk in the full step of godly parents. Meaning that's meaning that's what. Parenting is about you, not about that child. Parents do forget because parenting is about you, not about that child. So for you to parent well, your children, my children, must walk in the full step of godly parents. My focus as an intentional parent is to make sure that my children walk in the full step of me, a godly parent. Means that without you being born again, to what will, will your children follow after? According to First Corinthians 11, he says, "Be ye for followers of me, even as I am also of Christ." So your children must follow you as you follow Christ. So your children must follow you as you follow Christ. That is that that's number one goal of intentional parenting. So what is my goal as an as intentional parent is intentional parent is what is not to be permissive. It involves giving up control to God. And we while we in intentionally do our 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 part as parents. So it involves not to be permissive as a parent. And it also involves giving the control to God. And while we do our part God will do his part because the Bible says, train up your child. That is your own part. To train, to direct, to direct. So you don't give all, you don't, they are God's children. So therefore, God will take care of them. But you have a part to play. You have a part to play. I have a part to play. God told Abraham in the book of Genesis that I know him. And he will command his children and, and his household. And can God say, I know you? That you will command your children in the way of the Lord. I do not wonder what made Isaac not to not to jump from jump jump up the altar when the father wanted to sacrifice him to God. What made him? It means that he has been commanded. He understood God. He would have directed him in the will of the Lord. That's why he could stay on that or uh, on, on the sacrifice or uh, sacrifice altar without jumping up. Because he the, the Abraham has taken his time to put put that child, to put I think what in the way of the Lord. Your goal as an internal parent is to make is to understand yourself. That's why I say parenting is not about your child, it's about you. As a, as a parent, you must understand yourself. 
You must understand your values. You must, uh, 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 understand their own and your uh, and your own motivation, strengths, and weaknesses. Understand yourself. Understand your children themselves. Understand your own value. Understand your value. Understand your own motivation, strengths, and weaknesses. It's a pity that parents don't understand their children. They don't know their children. Our children know us more than we know them. Our children know us more than we know them. We don't know our children. That is why there are some, there are some, there are somebody at home. There are something else in school or outside. But because you are not just taking time on, to understand them and know their motivation, their strengths and weaknesses. That is what we call was intentional parenting. So as an intentional parent, your goal is, is, is parenting begins with you. Parenting begins with you. Intentional parenting begins with, with the parent, not with the child. And it cannot be outsourced. No, it cannot be outsourced. You cannot outsource intentional parenting. You cannot drop off and come and, and, come and parent again next year. No, it's a continuous thing until you see results. Second list outline says ways to be an intentional parent. So what are the ways? What are the ways for you and I to be intentional in our parenting? Number one is believe that God has given you the power to influence your child positively. God will not give you a child that you cannot praise. No, he cannot. He's a good father. He's a mighty father. He will not give you a child you cannot handle. You. Don't be helpless. You are not helpless. Again, you don't, you don't say, ah, oh, I do now. No, don't be helpless. He has given you the power to influence your child positively. And if you don't be able to talk to them and they will listen because God is a good father. According to Philippians 4, that he says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is mommy's guidance, parents. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, including parenting. So don't be afraid. Don't be jittery. Don't be afraid. Ha! Will this child uh, be, be a victim before she goes? No! Know that God gave you that child and he has empowered you to, to influence that child. Positively to end, so show, be, 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 begin to show that power that God has given to influencing them world positively. And again, what are the ways that we can that, that we can parent? Intentionally is what is to get the right knowledge. You Not know, many people parents we say we think that when when we give back to children we can parent. No, you need need knowledge. You need knowledge. You need, you need to understand. You need knowledge through the word of God to counseling reading of books why are, why why are toddlers always around the people shout you need to shout at them they are at that stage they are at that stage but when you don't read you don't see cancel how would you know attend seminars and training the, the, the way you go to school to, 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 to be trained you have to train in parenting so you need knowledge you need, you need, you need to get knowledge in parenting we need knowledge but parents feel that once they can do it to spam and can carry with the camp. No, that's not that's not the way it, it, it goes. You need, you, need, you need wisdom, you need knowledge, with the word of God, books, attending parenting seminars. Seminars, because the Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and get understanding. Know that your child, know that child who is not is neither or a race, no competition. Parents, please. Don't compare your child with other people's children. It is wrong. It is wrong because the Bible says that those who compare themselves to them to, to, to others are was are not wise. So don't compare your child with another person. Don't tell your child that don't you see Tolu? She's doing well. Look at you. Do you see your head? No, don't compare your children. No, it's not it's that I erase. Some, 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 some of parents now, the reason why they bought that bag. For that child, it's because somebody else, uh, 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 our friends, uh, their friend's child has that bag. You are using, you are using children as, as competition. No! Don't childhood is not, in, is, 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 is not a race, not a competition. That's why I said that I don't believe it was in late starters. 
every child starts at their own pace and they will get there. So if your child is not doing too well, don't give up on that child. He or she was, we get there. Give them appropriate age appropriate responsibilities. Give them age appropriate responsibility. No matter how child how for your child is, he or she can do something around the house. One thing that parents do not do not, do not house chores build some skills in our children. Once we train students to do house chores or take up age it's built some skills in their life and it's why don't allow you know, you're lazy around because you have house help around you no give them age appropriate responsibility like that like the way jesse gave david and jo J jacob gave joseph their own responsibility then teach your children essential life skills ha. teach your children essential life skills Teach them essential life skills, responsibility skills. There are many skills, emotional skills. Teach your children essential life skills. We should not, we should not give our, our responsibility to, 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 to teachers, to pastors, to train children. No. See, once your child is, no, you, you, you must make sure that your children was born again. And after that, we also make sure that was. You follow the old that should that should that was they are born again. They let me teach them the word of God. Teach your children the word of God deliberately. Deliberately. Not we, we, we want our children to should become like Adi Boye, Pastor Yedepo, like Peter, but we cannot do what it takes to make things like that. If I ask you that, like, do your children have, do quiet time, say quiet time, okay, they are young, and you want them to, to command fire, you are just joking, it's a wishful thinking. So, parenting is not a wishful thinking. You must bend down and do the work. Deliberately teach them the word of God. The way you deliberately bought iPad for them, and look at their iPad with all the cartoons in the whole world. Hey, so they deliberately sit down and look for what, the way you can teach them the word, word of God. Some people say that, I mean, I'm not a teacher. I don't like teaching you. I do not see you have to be a teacher. Teach all your own children. At least sit down, break it down, break the word of God down to them. Teach them deliberately the word of God. But parents want their children to be a little bit worldly, a little bit churchy. They want combination of the two. We are just joking. So we must deliberately teach them was the word of God according to Deuteronomy six verse. We say that teach them when when you are when you are, when you are at work. Teach them where you lie down. That's the word of God. An example of deliberately teaching them the word of God that you can say that this month you want to talk about what patience. Then we're going to teach them little by little until they understand. You no, know, for example, I um, from my house to the church every Sunday is, is what is 30 minutes drive. But I use that 30 minutes drive to teach them the word of God that okay, between be, 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 from my house. To the church is setting me. So that is between the church and the word of God. That's what deliberately, deliberately, but don't wish. Don't wish. Deliberately teach them. Then accept your child's uniqueness. <laughs> Parents, accept who your child is. Don't compare, don't compare your children with other people's children. Accept who your child is. Accept who your child is. Then be a great role model. That is where parents are missing it now. We want our children to do what we cannot do. And we think that they are angels. We cannot fast, we want them to fast. We cannot read the Bible, we want them to read the Bible. We cannot do that press on our phone. I, 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 we, do, we don't want them to press phones. Ah, the major problem of children now is their parents. Because we are, we are not good role models. We are bad, really bad role models. You want your children to be in a certain way, but do yourself as a parent, you are not there. Because it's a waste of time. Because children nowadays, they, 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 it is do as I do. Not do as I say. So for you to be, to parents intentionally, be a great role model. You know that it's not good to lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't tell them that go and tell that woman, I'm not at home. But the child to lie. So what, what you don't want to see in life of children, don't do it. Some parents are struggling with, with screen time, with social media with their children, when they, they are cooking themselves. 
You cannot do that to your phone. I want that child to know to know how useful. It's, it's going to start from what? From you. It's start from what? From me myself. Then, as parents, we have to be consistent, persistent, and deliberate is busy thing. Consistent, persistent, and deliberate with discipline. As a parent, as a mother, as a father, you have to be consistent. You have to be persistent and deliberate with with discipline. I've said it before. Parenting in internationally is not a wishful thinking. It's consciously do everything you are doing to your, to your children deliberately. Then, for us to pray in, in, in Shari, we must communicate values clearly to our children. What are your values? Many parents don't have values. What do you stand for? What do you stand for? Then, do, then communicate what you stand for. Okay, in this whole, I stand, we stand for what? We stand for patience. Then, tell them that, that you have to be patient. Then, be an emotionally intelligent parent. Work on yourself as you know that parenting was starts from you. Our class attitude says that discuss ways to be intentionally in raising a child. We show you a phrase of obedience. We can discuss our, our, our teachers and they will contribute with our, with our students and they will contribute more. Conclusion parenting with intentionality, intentionality will bring you and your child raising happiness and starts early. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name. We pray our Father God, who shall give us the grace to pray to our children internationally. That the grace to start early shall give us all of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.